So today we're going to look at the Falhaber uh, linear tubular motor. Um, this is a lot like the uh, the old Copley servo tube. Um, the, it's really small, so this uh, the magnetic pair length is about uh, 18 millimeters. So that's the fundamental for the pair of magnets. The uh, the motor is powered UVW. And the feedback is analog hall, um, but it's in a sine cosine format like one volt peak to peak differential encoder. So we can get the fundamental off of the pair of magnets, and then we can do interpolation on the drive. Um, today I'm using the ACJ S for sine cosine, and I have uh, 4096 interpolation that gives me about five microns of uh, repeatability plus or minus a count. Uh, if I was to use a plus drive, we could probably get uh, 0.25 microns with higher interpolation. Uh, but really, you know, it's going to be signal to noise ratio. So maybe a micron of resolution with a plus drive. Um, maybe maybe just a little better with the plus drive uh, than, than a standard drive. Uh, but today, for simplicity purposes, you know, I'm, I've got the cables wired. Um, I don't have them twisted yet uh, or shielded. Um, that, that should be a recommendation, but I just got this cable uh, from uh, Micromo, who distributes the Fal Harbor motor in the US, and uh, it, it wasn't twisted or shielded, so. We'll take a look at that and see what kind of noise we get, plus or minus a count with five micron. I've got it powered with 24 volts. Um, I'm sure 48 volts would be fine. I wouldn't hook up uh, 120 volts AC to this thing. I've got a uh, USB to RJ11 and a little adapter going into uh, RS-232 port here. I got a good uh, flashing green light drive enabled on the feedback connector. The, power and the motor power connector on the ACJ. We'll start by looking at the basic setup here. I'm going to change the settings, but nothing's going to change. We're just going to take a look. Brushless, linear motor, uh, analog hall type, uh, low frequency analog. Um, so that's the basically analog hall, but it's in a sine cosine format. And we're going to do position mode. Can is fine, uh, but we've got other formats like analog command and digital input. Um, there is an emulated encoder output, so we can feed this off to a controller if they want to see what the uh, encoder counts are. That's cool. And uh, the basic data, um, I got this from the uh, Fal Harbor guys. So I looked up the uh, micro mo motor. So here's the the tube and the, the case. And um, I downloaded the, the data sheet on this guy. So we can see I've got the 020-12 here. Uh, ordering information is very important. This is not a standard motor. This is, you know, a two week longer lead time. Uh, they'd rather you buy their drive, but I want you to buy the Copley drive. So uh, I ordered slightly longer lead time. The price is pretty good. Um, I only got one piece, but quantity of the price seems very reasonable. Uh, this is 3.6 Newtons of force, and it has a theoretical max speed of five, uh, uh, you know, five volts per meter per second. So that's like, you know, with 24 volts, uh, maybe we can hit four or five meters a second, but not really because we got some IR drop and we it's only a short stroke. So the time it takes to make the move is really the critical factor. I think I hit speeds of about 2000 uh, millimeters per second, but we'll take a look at that. Um, we've got some significant resistance, 13 ohms, uh, normal inductance. Um, so the, the specification here will show us you know, with loading uh, speeds that we can obtain. Um, so these plots are really good for us to uh, predict what's going to happen. Uh, there's good dimensions on the motor, and uh, we have different stroke length capabilities. You know, I've got a short stroke here, so 
practically I'm, I'm almost within the absolute position of this motor. Uh, that's an interesting characteristic. So maybe there's a new feature there, absolute on power up with a short stroke. But basically you got the motor power wires, plus five in ground and sine and cosine. So this dash O2 or dash 12, these are the options you need to look for for the motor. So I thought it was interesting to look at the uh, the blow apart on this. So this is a coil inside the tube and there's some uh, sleeve bearings at either end which hold the forcer rod, which is the magnets, a little circuit board for the analog halls to pick up the signal and convert it to sine cosine. Uh, this is a ribbon cable. I've got the flying lead cable version and you pop the screws off to take a look. Um, there's also some end caps uh, just for shipping purposes because, uh, you know, if you exceed the, the limit, I mean, I launched this thing several feet by accident uh, while I was tuning it. So uh, the plastic caps will help us not lose the rod, but it, it won't prevent launching. So the data is in here. I just set a velocity limit just to, um, you know, figure it the short stroke. I'm not going to go that fast. I got the uh, the default uh, interpolation for 12 bits. It's uh, five or point uh, four point three nine micrometers or point oh four three zero zero four three nine millimeters. Uh, I calculated the initial tuning values, which gave me some pretty good current loop bandwidth. Um, I I like to go in and do my own current loop tuning, but uh, I got about 600 hertz of current loop bandwidth here. We could get a little bit more, but uh, I detuned the velocity loop uh, quite a bit from the absolute maximum um, because as I was moving, I got a little resonance. I found that uh, moving the filter pole out to 500 single pole gave me a little more stiffness in the velocity loop. Always set your limit. 20% higher than the max speed you ever want to go. And uh, for velocity loop, the only real gain I adjusted was the PP term. Um, so we can take a look at uh, making a move with this. Actually, let's take a look at the tools manual phasing. Uh, so we can give it some healthy amount of current. It's a half an amp altogether normally. So I gave it 0.1 amps. So for phasing, you know, you got to make the red and the black line up. Um, that's pretty good. So it's sort of default out of the bag, zero haul offset, invert the motor, feedback, and uh, don't invert the motor. So forward counts go up and uh, the needles follow pretty good. So that's the phasing and uh, we'll take a look at tuning here. So I'm just going to uh, jog it back to the center here uh, to do the velocity loop tuning. Uh, I'd like to be able to uh, wiggle it back and forth here a little bit. Uh, I'm going to do uh, auto setup checkbox, but then I'm only going to do 10 millimeters a second at 3 hertz and just sort of let it wiggle back and forth. Um, again, if the, if the gains are too high, you'll get buzzing. Um, you can hear it. Uh, and see it. So this looks pretty good for uh, velocity following. There's a little ripple uh, that could be quantization noise or it could be a little bit of the uh, signal to noise ratio on the feedback. I haven't cleaned up the feedback yet. But uh, we'll do the position loop next here. So profile. Um, I'm going to do a 4096, but I have to jog it back to uh, the zero position. So let's just do an absolute move to zero. And that puts us back at the uh, full negative. And if I go 4096, that's going to be 18 millimeters. Do repeat and reverse. Uh, I'd like to look at the uh, actual current here. So current, actual current. And we'll check out the, uh, the gains of the PP. I've cranked it up. Uh, I've got some 150,000 millimeters per second squared and uh, 1.5 meters per second. Uh, so that's a pretty incredible uh, move profile. So let's hit it, see what it does. So um, 
I got to do the auto setup checkbox. Auto setup checkbox 4096 relative and channel three current, actual current. Okay, hit start. Okay, so there's a move. Let's change the trace time and let's see the negative. Oops, didn't want to go that way. So rather than watch me fumble around, I'm just skipping ahead. 50 millisecond trace time, repeat and reverse, going to do a normal trap profile. Uh, you can see it, profile velocity accelerate run at 1,500 millimeters a second, 1 1.5 meter per second. Uh, then decel, stop and hold position. Total trace time is approximately 22. Uh, milliseconds. I'm looking at the actual currents. They're well within the half an amp for a second. Uh, the RMS of this is 0.59. So with some dwell, we could do this kind of move all day. And uh, I'm just going to bang it back and forth here. You can see a little vibration going on here. Uh, the whole the whole system shakes a little bit, um, but we can watch that happen. Uh, so the the vibration at the end is has a little bit do with me not mechanically mounting this. So uh, stiffen the mounting. You can see it settles a little bit better. Uh, we got plus or minus uh, 10 counts here or less after the move, a little settling time. Um, with good mechanical mounting and some inertia, we could probably get the uh, settling time down, uh, allowing a little following error while we're moving. But uh, just wanted to demonstrate Basically, you know, plus or minus a count, and uh, we can see that the um, uh, left click, drag and drop a triangle. You know, we're we're within the uh, quantization plus or minus a count uh, while we're holding position at uh, zero. You know, zero position here, and uh, so with a higher interpolation rate with a plus drive, we could probably get down to 0.25 microns. Uh, one, one micron is probably uh, a good goal. And here we're holding position plus or minus a count or plus or minus five microns. And that's repeatability. Accuracy is something different. We'd have to get the laser out to measure the accuracy of the uh, position based on the magnets. But uh, that's an adventure for another time when I get a laser. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.